Praise the Lord. 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 I'm really happy and I'm very thankful that I'm here. And thank you, Brother Mark, for giving me this opportunity. So, what is our topic today? Peace. So, we are in this season of Advent. And uh, this topic that I got, peace, is really close to me. Because I am a peaceless person. I have no peace. Because I get so distracted. I am always in the clutter and chaos of this world. And I lose peace every day, every moment. But who holds me still? Jesus. He holds me still. So, I will, take, I will uh, lead you all through certain steps of what is peace. First, I'll define to you all what is peace in the, set, in the little meaning of peace. So, peace is a state of tranquility, quiet and harmony. It is an absence of violence. This is the dictionary meaning of peace. Biblically, what is peace? It is a state of calmness, mental state of calmness based on a relationship with God. A person's correct response to God's grace. Praise the Lord. 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 So, we are always in God's grace. God gives us grace every day. It is just us that we don't want to take it from Him. We are so involved with this world that we forget that so often God is giving, God is pouring out His grace on us, but we don't want to take it. And that's why we don't find peace. We go running behind peace, while peace is already ready made with us. So, what is happening these days to all of us? We are in the, season, in the month of December. The year is almost ending and Christmas is coming. But these nine months, it has things have changed so much. Like we have, there must have been times we have been in situations where we lost peace completely, where we were in so much of conflict, some or the other problems. Maybe we must have lost employment. Maybe because of online classes. Now that's a new trend. Online classes. We must have all lost peace in some form or the other. But who holds us? Jesus. Through all this, who held us for these nine months? Jesus. So let us be thankful to Him and let us prepare our hearts to welcome Him as He is coming to meet us again in, on Christmas. So let us prepare our hearts to welcome Him joyfully and with peace in our hearts. So let me first tell you all, when we think about peace, there's like two kinds. One is what we think is peace according to us, that is world's peace. And one is God's peace. So let's see what is this world's peace first. So, the peace of this world, remember, can only bring us temporary comfort for some time. So the first point is, the world's peace is fleeting and changes with circumstances. Fleeting in the sense, for the time being, there is control. But then, the situation changes and we are found in a state where there is no peace. We find conflict again. So the peace of this world is not temporary. We think going for a walk going for trekking, playing so and so game can give us peace. But no, that is just for that time being. That is just like a stress buster. That is not real peace that we think of. That is just giving us momentary comfort. It is not the true peace that God offers to us. 
so that is what is world peace it is fleeting and it changes with circumstances it changes with every situation my next point is this world peace is built on a weak foundation of compromise we tend to compromise a lot suppose what happens is you don't like to do something in your maybe in your office maybe uh maybe when as you are working as a teacher if you don't like what your colleague is doing if you don't like it but still since you don't want to be in a state of no peace you say okay let it be i will do it you compromise and when you compromise the peace doesn't remain in you for that time being you will feel that okay the thing is done everything is solved but then later on you will still keep feeling okay why did i say yes why did i do it again there is no peace in your mind you are in a state of no peace so that is what this world peace is based on a weak foundation of compromise so we this world peace is therefore based on compromise so the next point we come to the world peace ignores the root of the problem so for every problem what we do is we find we go be finding a solution we don't find where the source is if we find the source we can eliminate the problem there itself so if you see in today's world there is hunger there is poverty there is unemployment there's a lot happening but for that what we will do what people do is they will try doing good things small small good things maybe we feed the poor maybe we do this but nobody will look at the true cause of all this for example corruption is a true cause no one will look at it so it ignores the root cause of the problem but what does jesus do jesus uproots uproots the root that is the sin he uproots it and he gives us true peace but in the world we don't get that so that is what it ignores the root of the problem we only look superficially through everything we don't go deeper into it we only look superficially and therefore we find ourselves absolutely having no peace in such situations so we came to three points about world peace that is it is fleeting and changes with circumstances second point is it is based on a weak foundation of compromise and the third point is that is it ignores the root of the problem so this is what was world peace but our savior jesus what he promises he gives us a beautiful promise throughout in the bible when i was preparing for this talk i never knew that this word peace that god spoke so many times about peace and i was so happy knowing that god spoke about peace about promising peace to all of us in so many ways i was not aware of it but now that i know i would like to share all of it with you all so the first verse that i like the most is from the gospel of john chapter 14 verse 27 what jesus says is peace i leave with you my peace i give to you not as the world do i give to you let not your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid praise the lord 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 so jesus promises us the peace that this world cannot give us he is giving us this promise on his own that i will give you the peace that this world will not give you and that peace is eternal it will stay with us forever so now now that we saw the three points of what is world peace let's see at let's see what's god's peace first god's peace is secure and permanent god's peace is secure and permanent so when there was storm in the sea when peter and all the other apostles were in the sea and there is a there was a storm in the sea 
Jesus calmly, with in a peaceful way, he calmed the storm. So his peace, the peace he offered to his disciples, was secure. He said, "Be not afraid. I am there with you. I am on the boat." He gave them the strength. He gave them hope. He gave he gave them the assurance that he is with them, and therefore. there there was peace in the sea so this is what isaiah writes in isaiah chapter 54 verse 10 for the mountains may depart and the hills be removed but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of peace shall not be removed says the lord who has compassion on you such beautiful words that god gave us such beautiful covenant of peace he has made to us so always remember that god's peace is permanent it will not change like this world's peace once he gives you it will be with you the next is god's peace is built on the foundation of his word we saw just now as isaiah wrote that his covenant of peace will not be removed so god stands secure on his word whatever he promises he gives to us but what happens is in this world many a times what happens uh, many people break our hearts they they don't stand by what they say and often they they disappoint us they leave us in a very uh, in a very uh, weird situation they leave us in a very discomfortful situation and that leads us to having no peace for maybe weeks for maybe months and this keeps continuing this keeps continuing like a cycle but jesus promises peace that nobody else can give us so he says in isaiah yet again in chapter 26 verse 3 you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you praise the lord praise, praise the lord. lord so jesus so god he promises peace perfect peace of mind for all those who stay steadfast in his love who are strong with his word who trust in his word god promises them peace and god never disappoints us even if any of our friends family would disappoint us god will never disappoint us and the last point that i would like to make is god's peace is ours because jesus heals our root of sin So this is written in Ephesians uh Paul's letter to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 In Christ we are offered peace with God because we who were once far off have been reconciled to God through Jesus's death and resurrection We have been reconciled with God through Jesus's death and resurrection so what what does this mean to say is jesus is sacrifice the sacrifice he made for us on the cross it uproots the root cause of all our problems that is sin his sacrifice removes sin from our life his sacrifice it broke the barrier that was made by sin between us and god between us and receiving god's grace and peace so his sacrifice removed everything so while we experience eternal peace through reconciliation with god through reconciling with god we also receive the gift of his holy spirit we all need to remember as it was as during the praise and worship our sister sharon mentioned about peace about the gift of peace that the holy spirit offers to each one of us so when we are reconciled with god when we are one with god 
God gives us His Spirit. God promises to give us the the Holy Spirit, who will then bestow us, who will then give us the gift of peace in our lives. And even and with that peace, even when we are in a situation of turmoil, when we are in the midst of turmoil, we will always find ourselves at peace and in harmony with God. So I uh, I found like seven steps, seven ways to practice peace. Though it may seem unrealistic to many of us, but as I was reading up, as I was reading book on what peace really is and what God's peace is, I found these seven ways very appropriate. And uh, whatever it is, we will always face stressful situations in our lives. We will have every every possible way a stress will come and we'll be stressed out completely. So, but what God prom but what we need to do is we don't have to work at getting rid of that situation. We have to learn how to embrace peace even when we are in that situation. Because our reaction, the way we react causes stress. That is what is the root cause of all the stress in our life. But when we stop reacting to it, we will find peace automatically. So here are the seven ways that I found very interesting while I was reading a particular book. So that was, first is, be selective with how you spend your time. Most of the times, as we youngsters, what, what we spend our time most of the times with? Mobile, laptop, TV. It applies to me also. Even I spend my time like that only. But be selective. So if you are feeling very stressed out after using your mobile or if you're, if you're feeling very stressed out after having an online class or having meetings and all this, be selective in giving that much time only to it. And a lot, most of your time with spending with God in prayer. And you will find peace automatically. Second, be, be prepared to say no nicely. As for me personally, I can never say no to a person. I will take up the job, but then I can never say no. That is in me. I can never say no. But what happens is sometimes we are faced with a situation where we have to let go. We have to say no to it. Even if it is at a last moment, we will have to say no to it. So don't get panicked. Like, don't keep your heart troubled. But how am I going to say a no? Just say no nicely. And I, I cannot do so and so work. Just say it nicely. And that will solve most of your worries. And the person who is whom we made a commitment to will surely understand. If we are in a very urgent situation, if we are caught up with something, that person also will understand. So we need to be prepared to say no nicely. The third one is, resist the spirit of procrastination. Being in this lockdown for so many months, we are relaxed. We are like, when I feel like doing something, I will do. That is what procrastination is. So resist that spirit, have some self-discipline like, yes, I will do this now, I will do this this time, this time. Just have a little bit of self-discipline and that will help most of us to deal with any stress that comes and, will, and it will give us peace. And the fourth point is eliminate key distractions. If you feel very distracted with most of the things that's happening, if you feel very distracted, try to eliminate it. Try to uh, replace it with something. Try to replace it with, uh, suppose you get very distracted with uh, while, while having your class or while saying prayer. For example, the key distraction, the sat Satan first, when we try to pray, when we sit for rosary, Satan first tries to come and distract us there makes us yawn we start yawning we start to look here and there so in order to eliminate that and be calm just maybe close your eyes just say a small prayer while as you're praying the rosary 
just close your eyes and start reflecting on each bead of the rosary i'm sure it will make a lot of difference the next point is set appropriate boundaries for interruptions we will face interruptions again and again and sometimes these interruptions go off limit they go too much so set boundaries because when they go off limit we will start feeling panicking we will start panicking and that will lead to a, a very unpeaceful situation a peace a play a situation where we will not have peace so try to keep set appropriate boundaries that so and so interruptions i will be able to deal with just set appropriate boundaries for it next is modify your life learn to adapt many a times when things don't go our way for me when things don't go my way when i don't have to when i feel like no this is not this is not what i planned this is not what i set and i feel like that i and then i have to embrace something new i cannot do it immediately it is very difficult for a person like me but as i'm learning now as i'm learning now to adapt to each thing that change is okay and it is okay to have change in your life there is okay to have change in a plan as we learn to adapt to that as we learn to modify things we will surely get peace and we will not be like it didn't go according to what i planned so we will not think about that we will think we will focus we will go with the flow and that will bring us peace the next is and the last point that i am making is listen to the holy spirit god has promised us his spirit he has given us his spirit so when we pray ask the holy spirit to give us the gift of peace to lead us on the right way even when we are faced with so many stressor so many stressors tell the holy spirit you lead me just let and when you ask god to intervene in your life in your daily life there god brings peace so as i'm ending this talk today this first talk of mine as i come to an end all i would like to say is prepare for jesus he is coming and he is bra- and he indeed is our prince of peace he is coming to us be prepared to welcome him joyfully and with peace in our hearts with that i say thank you and uh, may god bless you all.